Hey, what's up, Professor Enton? Um, this is Fly Club 2K3. I'm, uh, I'm uh, extremely happy that you have um, continued the dialogue and you seem to be the, um, uh, the provocative source for these dialogues, which is a great thing. And uh, I find it extremely joyful to um, be a participant in this dialogue. With that said, I'm, um, I'm going to respond to your video, um, not in a reactionary form, um, but uh, a um, video that's going to make it clear that I don't think you're the only one that feels this incoherence. Um, I totally agree with you with your uh, statement of this incoherence of thought and of states of being in, in, the, in a world of becoming, and this directly plays into consciousness. Um, it's going to be, you know, no, it's going to be impossible not to go back to Nietzsche if we're going to go down this path. Um, because there is a naturalistic, um, ontological monism or an account of life that seems to be embracing itself. Um, and it, it's real clear-cut in nature, but it gets real tricky when we get to the human realm because of consciousness. Um, but, uh, all right, I'm going to try to get into that without <laughs> sounding incoherent myself. Uh, this is going to be hard. Uh, I'm going to try, though. Okay, so where to start? Um, let's, if we can suppose for a minute, just as a foundation, that life um, almost shies away from unification. It almost shies away from a dominator. Um, and we can see these patterns all within, you know, from bacteria all the way to human thought. Um, you know, there's always, uh, you know, some guy that comes along and says, well, I found a theory of everything. And then there's another guy that comes along with his group of guys, his group of friends, and they're like, well, that can't be because there's so many possibilities. This is the way it is. And then there's another guy, and another group of people that come along and say, well, no, you both are wrong because you're too extreme and it's probably somewhere in the middle. And yeah, it gets tricky. But uh, let's suppose that there is a um, reality that is of one force, um, uh, one quantity of force. Um, and this force is an affirmation uh, of itself. It says yes to itself. Um, uh, I guess it, it's almost like this this shying away of nature from unification of almost of being known and this resistance to a domination on any front by any one species through any of the affects. Um, it seems to underlie a common denominator of difference and variation. Uh, that is what nature seems to be, at least to me. Um, when we get, so if we, if we play with this idea, um, we can see that the transcendental ego becomes somewhat of a problem um, as a concept and as something that has manifested itself. Why it has manifested itself and it seems to be a stronghold within um, human thought and consciousness is I believe it's a, um, you know, kind of an Ernest Becker self-defense mechanism. It goes along the lines of Becker. Um, what I mean by the transcendental ego is that it, it it's this this will of the human to want to say it is the highest evolved and it is the end product of a process no longer um, processing I guess um, it's it's this wanting and desire to impose a unification on the world a unification of identity with the external world while saying I'm separate from the external world because I am the highest uh, pinnacle of, of this thing we call evolution, nature, and becoming. 
Um, and this is where we get to this brink of incoherence and uh, and almost like uh, giving up of a relativist position. It's when people have a real hard time of saying, oh, holy crap, I, um, I am this process. I am of it and I am in it and I am this process of becoming. Um, what seemed to be uh, a natural um, quantity of power, a quantum of power of overcoming itself, life as um, wanting ho something higher for itself. I don't want to say more efficient because I'm not, I'm, uh, I don't, nature is not mechanistic. Um, but uh, something um, more profound, I guess you would say, and it, there is a potentiality of that in the human being. Um, but when it gets to the human being, we have these these transcendental egos that prevent that from uprising within to consciousness. Um, uh, the denial of death plays a lot into that too, um, because we like to think that. Um, the process ends when we die as an individual, but it really does not. There is something at work here that is larger than, larger than the individual, larger than epochs, and even that's wrong to say because um, if we take this, if we embrace this idea, it actually kind of does away with linear time too. Um, so if. Um, The image of thought as something upon a natural harmony between thinker, truth, and activity of thought is a product of this transcendental ego. But as uh, as I think we have seen, and as Nietzsche has proved, and um, a few other ph philosophers have proved, proven, the there is no longer a belief in an absolute. There's an inability to believe in an absolute and there's an inability to believe that there's an innate truth to things. Truth becomes somewhat of a a thing to be judged and valued and assessed based upon a naturalistic view of the world between sickness and health. Um, sickness being the negativity, the um, self-destruction, the going under of certain organisms so other organisms and differences and variations can arise, um, whether or not they be um, positive is uh, something that can only be described in relation to time. Um, the other side is the positive um, symptomology of truth in which the embracing of life becomes something of a newly formed ego that has that keeps an awareness of itself of the human the I or it would work a lot better if we had a we and a collectivity of thought but that's not gonna happen it may though um, that says that I am this process um, I know I'm all over the place. I'm trying real hard to make it work here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so we get to this point, this brink of consciousness that is termed nihilism, which is the inability to believe that um, one is becoming, one is not permanent, one is not transient, and the natural essence of the world is differences, variations, transients, temporal fading away. This nihilism is almost like a giving up of of trying to make sense of anything in the world and um, playing to the myth of passivity um, and just floating along in a, fut in a futile way towards death. Um, 
this is apparent everywhere in the world now and it's precisely because of this uh, inability to let go of the transcendental ego and the absolutes and the one truth and the one God and um, and the rejection of life as a struggle life as a in the human realm a responsibility to better oneself because that is the embracing of life affirmation the bettering of oneself to strengthen oneself to cultivate oneself through ideas um, and and when it gets to a high point it starts to become a working naturalistic um, ontology of monism that is underlined by a plurality of differences that can uh, come about again and again not as the same but as uh, similarity as similar dif as similar on the uh, product of differences um, Oh, shit, I know that sounds fucking bad. Uh, uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to shoot another video. There's just so much to fucking talk about here. Uh, sorry for my language, I'm just getting kind of frustrated. I know what I want to say, but I can't you know, um, process my thoughts into uh, understandable language without getting myself into holes and others into holes. Uh... Yeah, I got to do another video. That's part one, I guess.